I'm going to talk about a, a topic very, uh, it's by design it is named to be very exciting and controversial. I call it the onslaught of MOOCs, which in my opinion provides an opportunity for what I call a constructive disruption. I have no doubts that the massive open online courses are slated to cause a huge disruption just like all other online activities on the web and internet cause disruption to normal processes. The first one was commerce. All commercial transactions, as you know, happen online. And disintermediation has resulted in shift of a large number of activities from conventional middlemen to a different breed of people. In exactly the same way, healthcare and education is likely to be disrupted next. This was predicted way back in late 90s and it has started to happen now. I would like to begin by reiterating a few problems that all of us are aware of, but quite often we tend to forget them. They don't remain uppermost in our minds. First, the need for quality in education amongst a humongous scale and amongst the largest possible diversity. I would like to remind all of you that we live in a nation which has unparalleled diversity. We have all ethnicities, all religions, all multiple languages. And we specialize in, in, in fighting over each one of these issues with each other. Under these circumstances, to achieve high quality is not very easy. Add to it the fact that the scales that we wish to work at are truly extraordinary. In fact, there is absolutely no other nation on the face of the world, including China, which has more education-seeking young citizens than what India has. We have a low gross enrollment ratio. It started with about 11%. It has reached about 15 to 17%. And we expect to reach 30% by the end of 2030. This is pathetic given an extraordinary number of young Indians wishing to step into higher education. So here is the scale to remind you. 350 plus million Indians are younger than 40 years old. They were so in 2011, in fact, these are 2011 census. The first leading wave of these 350 plus million Indians has hit 18 years, which means they are now ready to seek higher education. Our entire higher education system today with given the existing gross enrollment ratio and given an extraordinary increase in number of colleges and universities still handles only about 2 to 2.5 crore students or about 20 to 25 million students in the entire system. This includes all students doing three year or four year degree courses in various disciplines, all postgraduate students, all PhD students, everybody included. As opposed to that, about two crore new prospective students will be entering the fray starting this year. India has absolutely no way to handle this large number properly if all of them wish to get good higher education. So here is a scenario in a short way. If you look at any individual learner, the desire of an individual learner is very simple. Please permit me to acquire good skills. Please permit me to acquire knowledge so that I can earn a decent livelihood in later part of my life. It is precisely for this simple reason that everybody seeks higher education of an appropriate kind. An additional expectation, not often articulated, but an additional expectation of an Indian learner is, please give me an opportunity to learn and please give me that opportunity to learn at my own pace in the topics of my own interest and suitable to my ability. There is nothing wrong with this desire. In fact, every young child or growing child would yearn for this anywhere in the world. As I said, in India, we have a harder problem. The problem is made much harder by the response of our educational system. How does our system respond? The system says, please remember that only our degrees are recognized in the world. That is a 
important fact of life. The prospective employers select candidates for interviewing them for possible employment based on the degrees and marks code. Society therefore accepts these degrees as important components of the lives of young. Not only the system says therefore, since our own degrees are recognized, you have to do these degrees. Not only that, you have to do these degrees exactly as we dictate. And what we dictate? We dictate that a bachelor's program will be either three years or four years duration, that it will run under specific disciplines, that under each discipline there would be a program, for example, a BSc program in physics or an MSc program in chemistry or whatever, and that each such program will have to be completed in so many years of time doing courses semester by semester. For example, each course shall run for exactly four months and you will have to study that course for four months. Imagine now two different individual learners, one an extremely competent person who has actually studied a subject already in the high school in his or her spare time. That student comes and says, sir, please this introduction to computer programming is an obligatory course in your syllabus, but I have already done it, please exempt me. I am told no, that is not possible, you will have to do this course. I say, all right, please permit me just to give a final exam. The system says no, 75 percent attendance is compulsory and you have to give all exams. I therefore waste my time for the entire semester revising everything that I have already learned, wasting my time. Consider a second individual, a slight laggard. Please note that not everybody learns at the same pace. I am a slow learner. Well, just to remind you, there are large number of people who are slow learners, but they are not bad learners. Given more time, they can learn it well. So I go to the institution and say, please permit me to study this computer programming course in one year rather than one semester. Please spread it across for me. So no, no, the system says the semester course means you have to do it in one semester. But sir, I can't study it even in a semester, I will require two semesters. Well, please go ahead, do this course, fail in that course, then you will get an opportunity to repeat the entire course next semester by spending one more semester. This appears patently stupid to me from the point of view of a learner. But is our educational system sensitive to the learner's need or have we become captive of ourselves, our own defined rules and we are refusing to relook at the teaching learning process? These are hard questions friends. We rarely raise them because we are all part of the system and it is very easy for all of us to continue to run the system as we run it. It is in this context that the massive open online courses have arrived. There is nothing new about online education, this is age old. At least more than three decades ago, I remember myself and many other colleagues working on intelligent tutoring systems. For example, online content is nothing new. It has been there ever since computers came. Many of you would have heard of Gutenberg project, which was in my opinion the first open source project in creating open source contents which were easily distributed for anybody. However, what happened about three years ago was remarkable. Some people put together the notion that, look, we have contents, we have systems, we have online tests and so on, but there is a fundamental difference between all of these independent components and the way a particular subject is taught in the university system over a period of time, six weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks or whatever. What is important that happens during those eight, ten weeks is that students together are guided towards a particular set of activities spread over time, supervised, intervention by the teachers, interaction with the teachers. This forces the flock of students to apply their mind in a consecutive manner week after week, studying different topics, appearing for assessments and establishing that they know something. This is what makes a difference between just the availability of content, just the access to those contents and actual learning. Actual learning does not happen by making lot of contents available. Internet is full of huge amount of contents including free contents. 
excess now as Professor Kannan said is becoming available even for Indian students but it is available elsewhere. But if access to high quality content was the only criteria for knowledge acquisition then I often say jokingly that in the past years and centuries librarians would have been the most learned people because they had the maximum access to the highest quality stuff. There is no evidence of that happening. Please understand that the availability and free access to a large amount of content does not translate into knowledge. Knowledge has to acquire by every individual learner by applying his or her mind, solving problems, understanding things, perhaps discussing with others, in all cases applying the mind. And that is what a regular course in a so called system does. It forces individuals and groups of students to apply their mind to learn something. Well, some of them who may copy assignments will learn incidentally because even while you copy an assignment, you read that assignment, you write that assignment, you learn something. But a majority of them would apply their mind in solving some problems, participating in some discussions and thereby learning something. We say people are exam oriented, but please understand that when students prepare for an examination, they are learning something. In short, a, a course being conducted by a faculty member with probably help of teaching assistants and other colleagues for a group of students is still the best way of ensuring that learners actually learn something. It is in this context that massive open online courses were offered, started about three years ago. Three big companies in the United States were at the forefront, Coursera, EDX and Udacity. Uh, there were of course several other attempts all over the world. But what has happened is these MOOCs have caught the imagination of people and literally lakhs and lakhs of learners globally are participating. We also joined the consortium of EDX, IIT Bombay is a member of EDX. We have offered some courses to the global learners. We have since then launched IIT Bombay X as an extension online services for IIT courses. I will speak more about it later during the talk. But what MOOCs permit is courses to be learned from the best universities and courses to be learned from the best teachers. This is something which is not always possible in my given setting. Suppose I study in a, in a small less known college which probably does not have adequate number of well qualified and well experienced teachers then I feel that I am at a great disadvantage. And if I could learn from the best teachers from the best universities I would like to do that. Today MOOCs are not recognized, the MOOC certificates are not valued by the employers. But the day is not far away. For example, when IT giants like Tata Consultancy Services start saying that look, I can judge the quality of programming knowledge and software knowledge of the people by running an online test for lakhs of people. And if that knowledge is adequate, I can give them an employment, I really do not need a degree. If that starts happening and if that spreads, then if there is no importance attached to our degrees by the employers and therefore as a consequence by the parents what will happen to our system. Fortunately this is not likely to happen very quickly because there are some shortcomings of on the MOOCs but as they are corrected there is a great disruption that may occur in the entire education process. Let me first mention the shortcomings. First and foremost shortcoming is that MOOCs marks are not recognized by industry and by employers and by society at large therefore. However, as I mentioned this may start happening slowly. The second is absence of face to face interaction. Perhaps I belong to the old school but I firmly believe that a lot of learning is helped when I interact with people whether it is my teacher in and outside the classroom or whether it is my colleague students or whether it is others. It is the human interaction which actually forces my mind to work on some issues and problems and I learn from these interactions. This is totally missing in MOOCs which is everything is online. Of course, we have online discussion forums, they are good, they are helpful. But when compared to the value of human interaction in my own opinion, the online discussion forums are a poor substitute as of now.
for engineering education lack of laboratory work is a very major problem i call it elephant in the room nobody in the mooks community has looked at this problem and without appropriate labs i do not see how good technical education can be conducted to its completion these are the mooks that are offered from iit bombay iit bombay x dot in is our site we have started offering courses tailored for indian students and in my blended mooks uh, portion i will mention some very exciting experiments that we are doing now there are courses from nptel online courses they are being offered with some kind of a certification for which you have to pay a fees uh, they conduct only one externally supervised examination and they are also uh, going to run a large number of courses in in coming years iit kanpur professor prabhakar has led the effort on running mooks this year i believe they will be offering a large number of courses in agricultural engineering you must have heard of swayam which is the national portal proposed for mooks the work is progressing and soon hopefully all of you will hear some announcements regarding this what you need is internet bandwidth and affordable access devices in the hands of students most of our engineering colleges will have adequate computers in their labs many of our students have their own laptops and some who can't afford high cost laptops can use uh, uh, affordable devices which professor kannan and his team has designed but as i said using these devices and using the access to the internet actual course has to be done by students in order to learn something useful kannan showed you akash tablet here is a picture of an akash tablet with an arduino based anodino board which contains uh, which actually has a temperature sensor connected it's just to show that how experiments can be conducted using affordable devices uh, these are not virtual experiments they are actual experiments that people could conduct on low cost devices you have already seen this netbook you are aware of the t10kt project under which you are doing this workshop suffice it to tell you that the and and this kind of workshop has an important bearing on what i'm going to talk about in the blended mooc so uh, please look at just two important aspects one these workshops handle large number of people assembled at remote centers so we have established more than 350 remote centers across the country there are more in the pipeline once funds are released by the central government for the next phase of the project we'll establish more remote centers more importantly the modus operandi says that 35 40 50 100 teachers assemble at each of these remote centers simultaneously for a two week program as you have assembled the interactive lectures in the morning sessions typically are delivered from iit bombay or iit kharagpur which is our partner institution and there are tutorial sessions laboratory sessions as required which are conducted locally at each remote center now these 35 40 50 teachers assembled at a local center their activities locally are conducted and coordinated by a workshop coordinator one important question which was raised by a review committee very early in our project is how do you ensure that these tutorials and labs are conducted with the same rigor with which they are conducted in the iit system so what we decided to do is to collect all these workshop coordinators physically bring them to iit bombay and interact with them for one week telling them the kind of lab that will conduct the kind of tutorials that will conduct and also understanding from them what topics they teach how is the emphasis given to different topics how the assessment is done etc this interaction proves very useful after this interaction workshop coordinators go back to their respective remote centers spend about 2 months in setting up the labs tutorials or whatever whatever and that is how the workshops are conducted so in short this is a scene from the coordinators workshop this is a sample remote center just like where you are sitting today the blended books approach is nothing but trying to use a blend of conventional face to face education and learning through books please remember that even in our workshops we use online devices such as moodle but the entire course is not run online here we are talking about a conventional face to face education that happens in your institutions and learning through mooks simultaneously jointly all together we propose to use mooks as a complement for the normal education that happens in your institutions 
we propose that teachers in local colleges will start using flipped classroom. The model is simply like this. Take a course in thermodynamics, which is one of the courses being offered for blended MOOCs. It, the MOOCs course is taught by three of my colleagues led by Professor Bhandarkar, Professor Uday Gayatonde and Professor Milindatri. Let's say there are 50 institutions in the country which teach thermodynamics locally with one or two teachers at each place. Now imagine all these 50, 70 teachers and these three teachers here form a team and they say now we will together offer a course which will be a unique course. In that course, the MOOCs part will be handled by IIT faculty. All students in each of the 50 institutions will register for the MOOCs course. Simultaneously, the local teachers will use their classroom engagement A for doing their normal teaching if they so wish for some topics. But more importantly B, they will say these certain topics, I will not waste my time in giving you lectures, these three stalwarts are giving the lectures, listen to those lectures. I will flip the classroom and will use the classroom time for just plain discussion session problem solving. We have done that for many years, Professor Kannan in fact has been doing it for 5 years and we have found scientifically that the engagement factor with students increases significantly in this model is a new thing and therefore there may be some hesitation, there may be some misunderstanding. So in order to ensure that participating teachers in this model are absolutely in sync with everything, we propose to run three simultaneous teacher training workshops for the teachers who participate in this blended MOOCs thing. So this is an interesting experiment that we are planning to do. We expect to improve the learning process significantly through this mechanism. The main point is that the participating institutions will award weightage to both the internal score and assessment done in their own college and university and the marks scored through books. This is the first attempt to make the MOOCs marks being recognized in the normal subjects that people study in their university and therefore I call this mainstreaming the MOOCs. So my humble thesis is instead of waiting for the MOOCs to independently disrupt our educational system, why not adopt the good points of the MOOCs and try to evolve a better teaching learning environment which combines the face to face education complemented by the MOOCs. There are 45 plus institutions who are going to run this program jointly with IIT Bombay. By the way, these 45 institutions are all autonomous institutions or deemed to be universities selected from amongst our own remote centers. Of course, we chose remote centers because we need to have a face to face interaction with all participating teachers every fortnight for each of the subjects. We propose to start with these three subjects to begin with from this academic year and based on the learnings of this system, we will see how to extend it. I am convinced that this might provide not only a marriage of massive open online courses with conventional teaching, but it might provide a change for the better and together we might be able to achieve much better quality of teaching learning process. We expect about 30,000 plus students to benefit in the coming year from this pilot so that we can run it for maybe 3 lakh students first and then for 3 crore students subsequently. I solicit comments and suggestions, if any, from any one of the participants and particularly from the remote centers. Incidentally, on 6th of June, we are meeting with heads of the institutions or their empowered representatives from those institutions which have agreed to factor MOOCs marks into their own course grades. They will be coming here for a day long session. On Saturday afternoon, I have requested uh, Professor Parsarthi. Uh, all of you would have an interaction session with Professor Parsarthi, I presume, at 2.30 in the afternoon on Saturday. Thank you so much and all the best.